Next, let us discuss about the spread of cardiac excitation. First is from the essay note. SA node, it is the origin of impulse. That is the reason SA node is called as primary pacemaker. For example, if you see the SA node over here, it is located at the junction between the superior vena cava as well as right atrium and epicardially. But whereas, if you see these like SA nodal fibers, mainly contains maximum number of P cells. And normally, heartbeat is produced by the SA node. That's the reason SA node is called as a dominant pacemaker. It inhibits latent pacemakers known as overdrive suppression. After discussing SA node, the next one what you are seeing over here is called as the AV node. AV node is also called as the atrioventricular node, where SA node is called as a sinoatrial node. So, what is the location of the AV node over here? It lies at interatrial septum or near the interatrial septum, where SA node and AV node are mainly connected by three types of fibers, what you can see over here very clearly. So, these three types of fibers are called as internodal fibers because two nodes are connected to each other by these three fibers. Depending on the location, they are divided into three types. Anterior is called as backman, posterior is called as thoral, and the intermediate one is called as venki back. Like that, we have totally three types of internodal fibers. And after discussing the internodal fibers, what you can see over here is the bundle of us, right? SA node, AV node, and this is the bundle of us. The only electrical connection between the atria as well as to the ventricles is the bundle of us. And in majority of cases, SA node and AV node are supplied by right coronary artery. That is the reason right coronary artery infarction can cause bradycardia, which is more commonly seen. And this is what we need to know about uh, mainly the conduction system of the heart. And next is about what is the rate of automaticity, which means the number of impulses generated by the fibers of the conduction system per minute is called as automaticity, which means in the entire conduction system, SA node can generate impulse, AV node, bundle offers, Purkinje fibers, bundle branches, and uh, the myocardial cells all can generate impulses, but the maximum number of impulses generated per minute is by the SA node. That is the reason SA node is called as dominant pacemaker. For example, you can see over here, SA node can generate impulse between 60 to 100 per minute. In the same way, the second dominant one is the AV node. AV node as well as bundle office also can generate impulse. If SA node is not working per se, but the number of impulses generated by the AV node as well as bundle office always less than compared to that of the SA node, which is equal to that of 40 to 60 beats per minute only. In the same way, let us think that AV node is not working, bundle office is not working, SA node is not working. So, to maintain a minimal heart rate, even Purkinje fibers takes a pacemaker role where it can also generate impulse that is approximately 20 to 40 beats per minute. So, this is what is the rate of automaticity. And for example, incomplete heart block at bundle of us, the Purkinje fibers, where they can generate approximately from 20 to 40 beats per minute, where the ventricular asystole is seen called as idioventricular rhythm and asystole persisting more than 8 minutes develops a condition called as stokes adams syndrome. Now, let us discuss about time of impulse arrival at different regions of heart, which means once impulse is generated in the SA node, how much time does it take to reach the impulse? to the various structures of the conduction system. 
because the impulse is generated in the SA node itself, it does not take any time to spread all over the SA node that is the reason 0 seconds. But the time taken by the action potential to reach the initial part of the AV node is 0 0.03 second. After that what happens is the conduction velocity will be slowed down because the impulse is traveling through the three parts of the AV node and by the time it reaches bundle of earth the time taken by the action potential to travel from the point of generation from the SA node to the bundle of earth is 0 0.12 seconds and from there it reaches ventricular septum by 0 0.16 second endocardium is 0 0.17 to 0 0.19 second and epicardium is the last to depolarize there is a reason the time taken by the action potential or the impulse which are generated from the SA node to reach the epicardium is 0 0.21 to 0 0.22 seconds. So, this is what we need to know about uh, the time taken by the action potential to reach various structures of the conduction system. Now, what about the conduction speed? Conduction speed always expressed in meters per second. Purkinje fibers are the one the fastest conducting fibers in the conduction system that is 4 meter per second due to maximum number of gap junctions. Remember maximum number of gap junctions means maximum velocity. In the same way AV node is the slowest that is 0 0.03 meters per second due to less number of gap junctions and also because of small fiber diameter. So, by this we completed in detail about uh, the conduction velocities and origin of impulses, time taken by the action potential to reach various structures of the conduction system and by this we completed the conduction system. Action potential of the heart. Action potential of the heart is a vague word to say. We need to clearly classify whether we are discussing action potential of the cardiac muscle or action potential of the conduction system like SA node, AV node and other structures of the heart. So, in this topic I am going to discuss about action potential of the myocardial fiber that is cardiac muscle. So, before that let us talk in detail about what is depolarization and what is repolarization. Depolarization of the atria starts at the SA node and in the ventricle it starts at the interventricular septum and depolarization occurs from endocardium towards epicardium and first to get depolarized is the left side middle part of the interventricular septum when we talk about ventricles and last one to get depolarized is the base of the heart and pulmonary conus. But in case of isolated heart muscle fiber, depolarization occurs from sub epicardium towards endocardium. And what is about repolarization? Repolarization occurs from epicardium to the endocardium because the epicardium contains more number of potassium ions because of uh, high potassium concentration in the epicardial fibers repolarization occurs from epicardium and towards endocardium when it starts at the apex of the heart and last part to get repolarized is the base of the heart. So, this is what you need to know about depolarization and repolarization in terms of cardiac muscle fiber. Now, what is the resting membrane potential of the cardiac muscle fiber? Resting membrane potential is a difference in the charge between inside as well as outside of the cell and this potential difference or this resting membrane potential is mainly because of potassium ions and remember galvanometer is the one which measures resting membrane potential. Now, let us talk about resting membrane potential of various structures because anyway we are discussing cardiac muscle fiber resting membrane potential over here, but let me explain 
resting membrane potentials of other structures also. So the resting membrane potential of a neuron is minus 70 millivolts, skeletal muscle as well as myocardium is minus 90, smooth muscle is minus 40 to minus 60, SA node is minus 60 and inner hair cell that is organ of corti minus 60 and thyroid is minus 50 millivolts and RBC is minus 10 millivolts. So, these are the resting membrane potentials of various structures what you can see over here. Now, let us concentrate on ionic basis of action potential in the myocardium and this myocardium is called as fast response tissue and this action potential of the myocardium has totally five phases what you can see over here. Phase 0, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and phase 4. Like that totally we have five phases. So, what is the phase 0 over here? As you can see the resting membrane potential of the cardiac muscle is minus 90 millivolts. So, at this point what happens is because of uh, opening of fast sodium channels, there is a sudden rush of sodium into the myocardial fiber. Because of the sudden rush of sodium into the myocardial fiber, positivity inside the myocardium is greatly increased, which in turn causes rapid as well as initial depolarization that is from minus 90 millivolts to approximately plus 20 to plus 30 millivolts. So, phase 0 is called as initial depolarization and it is mainly because of opening of fast sodium channels. And after phase 0, you can see a small uh, spike over here. There is a slight decrease in the amplitude of the action potential graph, right? So, in the phase 1, the slight decrease in the action potential graph, what you are seeing over here is mainly called as transient repolarization. So, this transient repolarization is mainly because of small amount of potassium efflux because of little amount of potassium leaked out of the cell the positivity of the cell is slightly decreased because of the positivity of the cell is slightly decreased there is a notch what is created over here is called as initial repolarization so initial repolarization is because of small amount of potassium efflux is mainly by potassium channels and next is the phase 2. Phase 2 what you can see over here is a straight line. Straight line in the phase 2 is called as plateau phase and the plateau phase is mainly because of calcium influx by dihydropyridine receptor channels and also by little amount of potassium efflux by the potassium channels. So, phase 2 is mainly by the calcium. And next is about the phase 3. In the phase 3, you can see very clearly over here that there is a maximum drop in the amplitude. The maximum drop or slope of the amplitude is mainly because of decrease in the positivity inside the cell. It is mainly due to opening of fast potassium channels and leaking out of potassium from the cell into the ECF. So, because of the potassium is lost from the myocardial fiber, the positivity is greatly decreased that is called as repolarization. So, phase 3 is called as rapid repolarization. After that, you can see a straight line which is the restoration of the resting membrane potential. So, phase 4 is called as restoration of resting membrane potential and it is mainly maintained by sodium potassium ATP ACE pump. What do you mean by restoration of resting membrane potential in the phase 4? To generate another action potential, you need sodium in the ECF and potassium in the ICF. Then only the sodium will come inside the cell and depolarization takes place. But during the action potential events, what happened is in the phase 0 that is in the initial depolarization, maximum amount of sodium entered into the cell and in the phase 3, potassium is kicked out of the cell. So, now after the end of phase 3, maximum sodium is inside the cell and the maximum potassium is outside the cell. You need to kick sodium out and you need to bring potassium in 
This can be done by the sodium potassium pump mediated by sodium potassium ATPase. And uh, there is another pump which is located over here called as 3 sodium 1 calcium exchanger pump mainly for the removal of calcium from the myocardial fibers and this is blocked by digoxin. So, this is what is about action potential of the cardiac muscle. And next is about refractory period. So, what is the refractory period? It is a period in which the heart muscle or the myocardial fiber does not give any response to whatever may be the external stimulus is applied. So, this is the refractory period of the heart and this refractory period of the heart is further divided into absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period. So, what is the meaning of absolute refractory period? In the absolute refractory period, no stimulus of any strength can excite the cardiac muscle. So, cardiac muscle cannot be excited at all whatever may be the strength of the stimulus applied externally. So, this is called as absolute refractory period where the myocardial fiber does not show any kind of a response. But the small period what you can see over here is called as a relative refractory period. And in the relative refractory period, if the stimulus is stronger enough, which means a stronger stimulus can cause excitation of the myocardial fibers in the relative refractory period, but not uh, a normalized action potential A normal stimulus cannot excite the myocardial fiber at the relative refractory period. But if the strength of the stimulus is maximum, then it has an ability to stimulate myocardial fiber which is called as relative refractory period. So, by this we completed what is about absolute as well as relative refractory periods. Next is about SA nodal action potential. The SA node is called as a slow response tissue and the myocardial fiber is called as a fast response tissue. So, here in the SA nodal action potential, phase 1 and phase 2 are absent like uh, what we saw in the action potential of the myocardial fibers. Here we have phase 0, phase 3 as well as phase 4. Like that totally we have only 3 phases in the SA nodal action potential. So, what do you mean by phase 0 over here? Once the SA nodal cells reach a threshold, that is at minus 40 millivolts what you can see over here, immediately there will be opening of first type of calcium channels which are called as L type of calcium channels. So, the depolarization is mainly due to rapid entry of the calcium into the SA nodal fiber that is called as phase 0. So, here from minus 40 millivolts it reaches to minus 5 to minus 10 millivolts approximately right after that there is a repolarization initially it is a depolarization which is called as phase 0 and repolarization in the SA node is called as phase 3. So, here in the phase 3 is called as repolarization and it is mainly because of potassium efflux same like uh, action potential of cardiac muscle fiber and what is the phase 4? Phase 4 is called as pacemaker potential. It is also called as prepotential or it is also called as diastolic depolarization is mainly because of slow entry of sodium in the initial part of the pacemaker potential and also slow entry of the calcium in the final part of the pacemaker potential. So, the initial part of the pacemaker potential because of sodium entry is called as funny current is mainly done by HCN channel and the drug called as Ivabradine blocks HCN channels which is used in angina. So, pacemaker potential is extremely important because this pacemaker potential reaches the SA nodal fibers towards threshold from minus 60 millivolts to minus 40 millivolts is called as pacemaker potential where the initial part of the pacemaker potential is by the sodium and the final part of the pacemaker potential is by the calcium. Once 
the threshold reaches that is minus 40 millivolts then it triggers action potential mainly by the opening of fast calcium channels which are L type of calcium channels responsible for depolarization or excitation of impulses mainly from the SA node called as phase 0. So by this we completed about uh, action potential of the SA node.